Hello everybody, I'm Mr. Dean and it's time to get about the business of doing some city painting here. Or should I say map painting? And here we are with a map. Alright, this is a normal temperate map. Loaded it up. I've got mods going and a couple of trees loaded but no other assets. Let's do the first thing and turn off of the fog because I don't like it. <laughs> All right, we've got a very flat map. I'll demonstrate here. Go to the terrain level tool, right click anywhere, it says 60. Right click somewhere else, 60. It's flat all the way around at level 60. I want to draw a river. So to do that, well, I need to get some place for the water to flow. The map itself is about 17,280 meters on a side. What does that mean? Well, what that means is if I've got a 60 meter high level here and I want to have a 1% slope, I would need to have at the other end 172.8 meters more. Well, 60 plus 170 is about 230. Let's go with that. And we won't use a single pixel brush. We'll use, we'll use a small one here, about 100. I'm going to use this area that's outside of the map area. And just paint along the top end here. Some area that is... I'm going to switch brushes. I'm going to use this one here. That will fill out better. I've got a lot of extra brushes, and I do recommend looking up additional brushes they are quite handy to have in the game for other purposes but for this one here I'll try to use the circle brush as much as I can or some default ones that came with the game okay I've gotten about out to the edge there I noticed I've got a little divot there and I can fill this out a little bit more here okay so I've got this 230 meter height here and I've got 60 down there. How do I get the land to slope? Well, they are using the slope tool to do that. What I do is I just right click on the place where I want the slope to come up to, right there. And then I'll start painting from the bottom up to that slope. With a brush size of 106, this will take way too long. I'm going to make it 2,000 and I want to get right on the edge and then build my way up and as long as I hold the cursor down it will continue to paint the way I want it to paint and I can't get it to scroll off to the side until I do that little hit the scroll buttons and I've got a smooth smooth there. Now if I start clicking again it'll possibly make some other weird things so I've got this one click wonder here. If I hit undo terrain modification the whole thing goes away. I don't want to do that right now. For my next move here I want to make a river and I'm going to go back to the level tool. Now we've already got 230 set here. I want my brush size to be smaller. Let's make it around 200. And let's now make the terrain height here 10 meters less, 220. And I hit enter. All right, now where will the river start? Let's say the river starts in this area here. So I'll make a starting spot, about yay wide. That's all I need. I go to the other end, way at the back. If I right click here, I've got 61. Notice how the level of the sloping tool slightly modified the level there. That's okay. I want the river to be 10 meters let lower here as well. I'll type in 50, hit enter, and I'll have the river end roughly in this area. Okay. So I've got my start, I've got my finish. Let me scroll out so the whole thing is brought into view. And let me go now to my slope tool. I will now right click in this area here. So the 
height is 220, not 230, but 220. So the, this height is lower than the surrounding area. And if I start on a normal flat area, it will do some odd things. But if I start in this lowered area and draw up to the top, it will stay below the terrain height all the way through and carve a channel. So that's what I want to do. Now what kind of river do I want? For today, I want to do a meandering river. Meandering means it'll go back and forth and back and forth and then come back to the top. I want to be careful with it. I don't want the river to get complicated in a weird way where I'm going up and then down and then up again and then down again. That does some odd things with the hydrographics in the game. And I'll have some bare patches of my river and have to work with that. I, I want this river to be a young meandering river and have a rather normal flow. Now don't worry if I miss some spots. I'm going to come back over those. And don't worry if the mouse has a jump those are easily explainable things due to rock structures being uh, what they are, something like that. It, it, it just happens that way. Sometimes rocks get in the way and river will flow around it. Okay, so I've got these little areas here where they just come close enough but they don't actually meet. I could just click here and fill it out. There we go. And I could go along, find another spot where it skipped, and go here. Now this is using a mouse. If I had a tablet with a stylus input, this would be much, much smoother. And I would be happier with that. Using a mouse to draw is like pushing a brick across paper. All right, I've got my meandering river. Look at how it meanders. It, it, follows a pretty predictable pattern. If I had more map to play with, maybe I could have it dip down lower, come up, and then maybe a low dip and a high move over here. Put some more variety in there. If it looks very regular like this, it's not going to be attractive. So, next question is, do I want to have smoothed banks? Do I want to have the river be wider at the bottom than at the top? Well, actually, that's two questions. Well, I could answer those qu pretty quickly here. If I want it wider at the bottom, well, why don't I just widen it out some? There we go, carve additional channel. A and maybe while I'm carving the channel, if I see those little islands appear, maybe just leave them there. Yeah, it adds a little character to the river. And there we are. Let's make it kind of even that way. There we go. So we've got a wider channel there. Let's make it even wider river on that bank. There we go. All right. That looks nice. What about over here? Let's give this area a little bit more. Oops. Undo that one. <laughs> Always start from the bottom. That's right. Always start from the bottom. Starting from the top, it was starting to look a little odd. As long as we start in the bottom area, we should be okay. Alright, we've got a little more give on that turn, so that should help the current slow down. This will be a bumpy ride for the river, as will this, especially having that loop there. But let's, let's make it a little bit wider there. Let it curve out. There we go. And by the same notion, that bend there too. River bends tend to be a little wider and a little smoother. Okay, so I've got the channel manipulated there. Next step, I can go to the soften tool. And I can work along the edges of the river and make it more or less smooth on the edges. I don't want to have full brush strength for that. 0.24 looks good. 0.08 looks even better. Let's go with that. All right, I'll just go 
here. If I run it along, it will have the general impact of leaving it on full strength and clicking it. But if I move quickly enough, it will glide over the area and give me some of the softening I want. Now the ones in the middle, they need to be really softened. Those are going to be some shallows. And I'll just glide it along here. If I miss a spot, don't worry. I can always go back over it. I can always leave it that way for a little variety. I can also make this brush a little bit larger. There we go. Now I've got the work cut in half. <laughs> I don't want to hold my mouse button down too long over an area or it'll really erode it. Or in other words, if I want an area to get really eroded, I'll mash that mouse button and keep it there. Like, oop, that last one may not have been what I want to do. So let's go a click and a click and a click and that's it. If I show you down here what holding it down will do, look at that, go, and I can just keep whittling away at this over time until it just goes down to nothing. Look at that. Much more gradual slope that way by just holding it down. And as I work my way across, it's going to make it less and less of a incline. All right, that's not what this is for. Now look at the channel, it is really shallow. Just looking around, it, it's not that many meters difference. If I take the level tool, let's get back down to a smaller brush size. Right click here, it's at 90. Right click here, it's at 96. Very small difference. So, we've got a shallow channel. We're ready to go to the next step and that is putting in the water. All right, I've got it on pause. I'm gonna go full on water capacity one and drop in two such fonts at the top here. Now, I don't want them to stay this way. If I hover over them, each one is basically going to flood the entire area. You see that by the area turning white. So I'm gonna hold down my mouse button and scroll and now that white area diminishes. I want to get it to where it's just about there, where you see it filling up this area and it's very high. It will still flood the rest of the plane, but because I've given this water a channel, it will go there and not flood out the rest of the plane. Again, just barely, there we go. Doesn't have to be exact. And we're good. All right. I'm going to turn off the water. I'm going to put my gain speed up to massive. I should move this out of the way here. All right, three times gain speed because that way it will go a lot faster. I'll hit gain speed three. <laughs> now that's the play it mod. If you don't have that, well, I recommend it. Don't worry about this first wave of water coming out. That's just natural. See the rest of it conforming to the channel and it's making its way down. Now we're already seeing a little bit of rippling as it comes around that first bend. We'll keep an eye on that. If it keeps rippling there, we may want to put another water source there to level out the water in that area. But if it doesn't keep rippling, then we'll be fine. Notice, whoop. <laughs> First notice is as I move the mouse on this high level speed, it will jump very dramatically. So I'm going to use the arrow keys and even then it's still quite jumpy there. So I'm noticing my first issue here where it doesn't quite fill out in this area. My choice would be to put in a new lower channel that'll keep all the water going in that area and it'll occasionally spill out to the sides and that makes for an interesting effect. If I want this to be full up though I need to consider putting in another water source right at the beginning of this flow around. But we'll let it keep going. We haven't even have the water go all the way to the end. Now, will this water reach the end? Ah, that's another good question. 
we're putting out a lot of water over here a lot of it is flowing off the edge if I come around this way oops well let me zoom in on that you can see it flowing off that side so we're losing parts of the water there and then the rest of it is flowing down the river so adding an additional water source along the way as I said will help to even out the flow as well as add enough volume to the river so that way it can reach the end. If we look at this, we notice it is starting to peter out right around here. We're not getting any water in this area. Okay, that's fine. Let's pause, space bar. Let's go to our game speed. Take it back down to normal. That way I can move the mouse without having it jump around on me. Where would normal go? Ah, there it is, good. All right, we got normal. Park that for a while. Now I can scroll and be fine. <laughs> okay, so let's get the water source here. Size one? Sure. Size one. Drop it there. Move it down. This one I want to be not where the water level is going to flood everything around it, but where it's going to push out just enough. Let it be there. It'll fill up those banks for sure. I happen to know that it's probably going to need some more water as we go along. So I'm going to go to each bend and just drop in another water source. That'll help keep things going. Uh, Alright, got that. Let's get one here. Do, 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 do. Again, it will even out the water flow and help to keep things going without my needing to flood the rest of the map. Here. And we'll put one here. Now this might be all I need to get to the end. Let's see. I'll unpause, come off of that, and let's make the game speed go crazy and zoom out. Notice how the water's starting to join up here. It's starting to spill out there and spill out there. Don't worry about it. We're going to let this run for a while and see what happens when the water reaches the end. And there we go. Oh, the water is starting to reach the end. That's good. It's a simple river here. Once it's done that, well, let's go back to normal speed here. <laughs> there we are. Normal speed. So I can scroll around and inspect. Okay. Maybe I'm putting out too much water. We're getting some spill over here. We're getting some spill over along the way here. All the way down to the end, we're seeing some spill out. This gives us a couple of thoughts here. One would be, if this is happening in real life, then this area needs to be a bit larger to handle that much more water. So, why not? Let's hit pause. And let's widen this out. Water likes to flow down and it's eroding more there, so let's take the slope tool and we'll keep it high on the prize up there. And we'll make the brush size a little bit bigger and the strength maximum. And let's just say we're going to take this bend here and really bring it out. Really bring it out. Really bring it out. Alright, let's let the water go there now. And now we've got less flooding. Let's get our soften tool. Go back to a low brush strength. Just run along the side. It's been going there for a while. Got a small, shallow island there. Let it go, let it go. Let's see if it fills back up in over here. I'm hoping it does. Oops! Now it looks like it's all spilling out this way. I didn't necessarily want that. What would be a geological thing that would keep it from spilling there? Well, obviously, a hill. 
let's do that. Let's just get some levels. And 187 there, 186 there, 185 there. All right, it's roughly all the same level. Let's make this be about 200. And we'll just put something right around the edge. We'll smooth it out. We'll smooth it out. So now we've got a ridge here. Let's see if that stops the water flowing. There we go. If we bank the corner, it'll keep the water from going where we don't want it to go. Now I had a little bit of a leak there. If we keep getting leaks, maybe we'll either extend the lake bed slightly. Yeah, yeah, yeah it keeps going. Okay, let's 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 do that. We'll extend the lake bed slightly, or we extend the ridge slightly. I'm going to go with the lake bed this time. Smaller brush size. Oops, that's a smooth 181. Now let's just cut a little bit more of a channel around here. And we'll smooth that side, but not the bottom. See what happens there. Ooh, it breaks a little bit out there. Let's let it go a little bit more. And we'll smooth it out. This is becoming a bit of an adventure. All right, I don't want it to go that far. So let, wow, that's, that's, that's significant flow. All right, time to put that ridge back. This time we've got an explanation why is it going that way. Because that's how the ridge extends. There we go. We can make it much, we can really run it down here. It doesn't have to be that much higher, just a wee bit higher. And that's where the water pressure is forcing it. I can make something down there. Okay. And it may retreat from there, it may flood there. That's okay, we can do something with that, with vegetation later on to decorate that area. But now, we've taken that bend and made it a rather interesting formation. Coming around over here, we've got some more issues here. This channel should either be wider or deeper to handle that level of water. Let's go ahead and make this channel a little deeper. All right, oops, let's go here to the level tool. <laughs> oh dear, I need to undo that last modification and messed that up. Okay, 169 here, 164 there, 162 there. All right, let's go with pause. I like to pause when I do this here. This level tool over here, 169 let's make this a deeper channel by about three meters so 166 go right there and next we're going to come over here 156 okay we'll make that a deeper channel by three meters 150 oops delete that and hit three enter and now we go to the sloping tool. It's going to go to 166. We started down here. And let's come on up. Carving our channel. I notice I've got the strength only on 0.16. Let's see if that works though. Oh, look at, look at that already. It kind of soaked up some more. That's good. It's still bulging out around here, so we can make this a little wider before it deepens. Or we can make it a little bit deeper, too. If we take a look at the river flow itself, notice how where we deepened it, it becomes, these arrows get a lot bigger. Because that, that's a deeper, stronger flow. And you see what happens when we let it run? We 
we get a better view of what's happening there. Just a little bit of flood along the edge there. So for that, let's go with the level tool. That's 170, and let's push it out like that. And while we're at it, let's raise this. That's 183. Let's make that 193. We've got an escarpment starting to form here. There we go. And we can flatten that out on the land side and on the water side. Just a light touch there. And I'm kind of liking the fact that I've got a really low brush strength here. There we go. Now let's let that flow along. And we've got that water contained. And again, we've got some more of this ridge area here. That helps to give our map a little more of a story to it. What's going on here? You know, there's something that made this overall slant down, but then we've got these ridges popping up here. Why? Something pushed them. What pushed them? There was volcanic activity. There was something cool going on. But there it goes. Right, we see this, as I was talking, I saw a little more spill along here. One thing you've got to keep in mind is that during the game, the water level will rise and fall periodically. So you need to keep an eye on how floods happen every now and then in a particular area. If in this, once we set it up, if it sets and doesn't ever come back, we're good. But if they keep recurring, it's going to happen in the game. If you don't want that to happen, you need to set the geology up to where it doesn't have that go. And one thing I could do also is just remove a water source. Maybe we're getting too much water pushing out here because we've got too much water between these three areas. So which one do I knock out? Let's knock out this one. I didn't plan this beforehand, I just wanted to, I just put those down just to see what would happen. And now I'm taking them away just to see what would happen. And now I'm putting game speed up to 3 speed just to see, again, what would happen. Let this run. I like having this option because this can take a very long time and sometimes I want to know sooner rather than later how my water is going to work. Hmm. That's... That's troubling. All This water's all spilling out. And it's not quite making it around. I wonder if I still have too much water there. Well, let's take it away and see what happens now. Mm -hmm. Again, let it run. If you don't have play it and you want to let this go, then take the time I'm doing and multiply it by three. And you may just walk away and do something else. Read some Wikipedia articles on hydrology and how to calculate terrain slope and what kind of plants grow best in wet retention basins. And when you're a few articles into it, you come back to the game and look and go, hmm, what's going on? Well, I can tell you that we're still seeing these scallops forming along here. And that means we have some uneven water handling. Where it's smooth, it's smooth <laughs> all right I gotta do something Oop. first of all I gotta take the game speed back down to normal all right now I gotta do something about these scallops here hmm pause maybe what's needed is a bit of a drop let me explain let's go here what is this level, of course, let's get rid of the plate. Okay, this level is 147, this one is 162. What if we come around this bend, go straight, oh, here's that 159. Okay, let's make, let's make something dramatic happen here. Let's go with this being 155 even. Bam. Alright. 
and let's take this brush strength all the way up. All right, crack, 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 crack. Right there, we've got a sudden drop. Doesn't look like much from 160 to 155, but that's five meters. And while we're at it, where's more rocks? Oops, that's not rocks. That's, that's rocks. Okay. Let's put in some larger round boulders. And this is where a moderate falls is located. Let's see how that looks. Whoa, okay. Getting a little bit of backwash there, but it will stabilize. And now, ooh, water rushing over the falls. Hoorah. And we still will see a little bit of it boiling out on the side. Let's expand this area because it is definitely needing a little bit more room. So let's go over here. Right click that 162. Let's just build out that channel. Maybe down here, we need it to drop a little bit more. So let's go ahead and drop a little bit more. 150. Right here. There we go. Now we're going to keep drawing this 150 until it levels out. We're going to follow the channel. Get deeper. All right. If you notice, it's still showing a little bit of a glide here. Right here, this is 153. That's still 150. 151 here. 150. All right, so right around this turn here is where we need to make it end. So I'll just go around here. Come around there. Make that a little wider. Oops. Well, make sure we did. Alright, come back. A little rise there, that's alright on it. And we've got this channel running really fast and deep here. Still seeing a spill out over here. Alright, well, I'm going to put the brush strength really low brush size fairly big and I'm going to take one of my custom brushes and just show off now. Click. There we go. I'll get this one. Click. And I'll get this one. Click. There we go. And not to be outdone, we'll put a little bit over there. And I'll get this one. Click. And now we've got an explanation why there are rocks there. I could put some more in. Would you like that? Okay, let's do that. Let's put a few more rocks in. And some of these are big boys with trees on them. I didn't necessarily want the trees, but okay. I don't want to go with buttes or anything of that sort. And I'll let some of them Extend over the edge. Get this bigger one here. Put a little blurp in there. Oh, see how they <laughs> they make the water go. Okay. This one I don't like. And that one I don't like. I don't want the ones with trees, I just want straight up rocks. Alright, that one got 
trees too. Okay, let's go back to the rocky nest. I'll go to more of these circular ones. Try not to repeat too much. Oops. Yeah, make sure you've clicked on the right one. And we've now got a boulder field. There we are. One more there. And now... Oh, look at that. No trees yet, just rocks. And already, we've got some beautiful falls here. That is super looking. Look down. Oh, there's more rocks in there. Yeah, there are. And we've also taken care of another flood issue. How about that? Ah, <sighs> well, we've been doing this for about 35 minutes. I could keep going, but I would be doing the, basically the same lessons for the rest of the flow. We've definitely got something to work on over here and down at this area. Maybe this is something we want, or also here, we just want to work on the channel and the size of the river all the way down. All the way down is how you want to do it. But this is a good start, and I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on making a meandering river, and I hope you give it a try as you make a map. Ah! <laughs> had to click around until I got to the <laughs> end of the thing there. So until next time, I'm Mr. Dean saying happy city painting. Like, comment, and subscribe. Bye for now.